Hey guys, I hope you're all doing well. My name is Jam. I'm joined with Caesar and Jeremy. Uh, we'd like to present you the case of the student strike 2012 uh, that took place here in Quebec. I'm sure all of you remember, maybe some of you have participated in the strikes. Um, so the format of the presentation will be as follows. Uh, first, we'll start with a short history and then we'll go into details for the Bill 78, which is also known as an act to enable students to receive instructions from the post-secondary institutions they attend. Um, these two sections will be co covered by Caesar. And then what follows is the consequences. Uh, and in this section, we will discuss uh, badge 7, 7, uh, 7 to 8, the involvement of the post-ethics post committee, and also the, if the, the effects of the student strike. Um, this section I will cover. And then we will end by providing our comments and solutions to, to pre prevent future uh, disagreement between the government and the students. Um, and these uh, comments and solutions will be offered by Jeremy here. Okay, so the 2012 Quebec student protest took place in the spring of 2012. It was a direct result of, uh, an, of the, after the provincial government led by Jean Charest announced tuition increases. Uh, the planned tuition increase was uh, to be $1,600 in a five-year period. Uh, most universities uh, were for the increase because it was uh, to come back to them by the way of uh, additional funds. Um, but the reason why most students were not for this increase, first of all, the logical economic one, also it was because the tuitions were to be implemented right away by, from 2012 to 2017. But the funds that we're gonna get to the universities, we're only gonna get there by 2015, 2016, so at a later date. Um, so um, the main associations that uh, were uh, behind most of the manifestations that took place, took place around Quebec were the Fédération étudiante universitaire du Québec, la Fédération étudiante uh, collégiale du Québec. L'Association pour une solidarité syndicale étudiante, ainsi qu'une quatrième, that was relative, that was new to, to, for, to this protest, was the Coalition Large pour l'Association d'une solidarité syndicale étudiante. Out of the four, it was the last one, the one that I just named class, that was uh, found to be the most radical one, you can say. It was the one that uh, tried to plan more, more manifestations, get the get students going, uh, like uh, bother the government more. And it, w it went as far as to the government sometimes refusing to negotiate with students if any members of class were present. Um, the, the protest took, uh, uh, finished around the, the fall of 2012, around September, because uh, of the start of the new semester. And also with the impending election of uh, Pauline Marois as a new premier who, prom who promised to uh, freeze any tuition increase. Uh, many manifestations took place around the province in some parts of Canada uh, regarding the, the, this uh, tuition increase. One of the most popular ones was the casserole movement, which, uh, which took place in the days after um, Bill 78 was introduced. The casserole movement was people that went on the streets uh, with pots and pans just to uh, protest and that's it. Uh, Bill 78. Bill 78 was introduced after many protesters um, uh, were blocking entrances, entrances to classes and weren't allowing other students to get to class. This resulted in students filing injunctions uh, to get their right to, to go to class to, so their right could be respected. Um, some key aspects of the bill were that all the students' associations had to tell the police eight hours in advance of any manifestation that they were planning on taking or, or on doing, uh, how many people were meant to attend, and the route that they were uh, planning to take. Another key aspect of the bill was um, that universities uh, had the liberty to withhold, withhold funds from associations, school associations, and also it, it became very easy for associations to get sued by outside parties. Uh, thanks to this bill, uh, the National Assembly uh, legislative uh, delegated a lot of uh, power to the police in Quebec to uh, control the manifestations and this resulted in a lot of uh, police brutality and abuse of power uh, by the, the members of the police. Uh, now, 
uh, Jen is going to talk to you more about it. Yeah, on that note, I'd like to talk about uh, badge 7 to 8 or matricule 7 to 8. Uh, those were the nicknames given to the female post officer Stephanie Trudeau. Um, I'm sure you guys all remember because the videos went viral on YouTube. Uh, she was one of the post officers that was tasked with enforcing the new laws passed by uh, the Bill 78. But she failed to do so because she used powers that were outside of the delegated powers that were given to her. And uh, this is a good case of administrative law because uh, it showcases what happens when an institution, which in this case is represented by the post officer, Matricule Seth David, uh, uses powers in an excessive manner or, an, or in an unlawful manner. Uh, so what happened is during the, the first protests, uh, there was a video that uh, surfaced on the internet showcasing the Matricule Seth David uh, paper spring students. Uh, this created a lot of noise and a lot of, a lot of complaints were filed against her but it, uh, it, all, it all went uh, south when she assaulted Monsieur Lavoie on October 2 in his own apartment. Uh, this incident was filmed by uh, the friends of Monsieur Lavoie. This also went viral on YouTube and this, this, uh, this resulted in complaints being filed against uh, Madame Stéphanie Trudeau or known as Badge 728 and as we discussed last class uh, uh, with the post post ethics comedy, uh, she was summoned in front of a tribunal uh, after her uh, after the complaints were reviewed, and it was deemed necessary that she is being summoned in front of the commissioner. And uh, the decisions that were rendered uh, basically ultimately uh, resulted in her losing her badge. And uh, here are some of the uh, decisions that were rendered in virtue of uh, code de deontologie des policiers du Québec. Uh, she received a declaration of disqualification of five months for break breaking Article 5, uh, one month for break breaking Article 10, five months for break breaking Article 6, and six months for breaking Article 11. Uh, she appealed to the uh, Superior Court, but it, ha it has been rejected by the Superior Court judge. And as of today, she, does, she has no right to practice law enforcement because she lost her badge. Uh, next, I want to take you guys uh, to a... To a uh, guide of a timeline that led to the implementation of the Bill 78. Uh, well, first, the students started by walking the streets of Montreal, creating noise, but then they took it to the next level when they marched on Pont Champlain, or Bridge Champlain and Bridge Jacques Cartier, uh, shutting them down both uh, for uh, almost hours, uh, during rush hours also, so people can go to work. Um, and so this made the public more involved in the protests because now they were affected by those protests uh, if they weren't before. Um, also, I want to talk about the, this is what Caesar mentioned about the schools that were barricaded by the students, uh, which uh, prevented other students who wanted to attend classes unable to do so. Um, at that time, I was a Dawson student, and uh, I remember that we voted against uh, the participation of the strikes but it was one of the very few cases that didn't uh, go on a strike and uh, the majority of the co colleges and universities they voted for this strike and so they went on a strike and uh, the students like uh, it is known they barricaded uh, the school so that uh, other students couldn't go in and even pre even teachers were side deciding with the students and this is what led to pro the proposal of the emergency bill 78 which passed uh, on May 18th and now I want to end by talking about the effects of the protests because the city of the Montreal witnessed a lot of vandalism, a lot of property damage. There were thousands of students' arrests. There were even some of the students that were hospitalized. Uh, I don't know if you remember, but one of the students lost his eye to a uh, stun grenade, I think. There was about 200 complaints that were filed against the police. But all of that, all of that, uh, ended when the government and the students came to an agreement on September 5, when the government uh, announced that they would uh, freeze the tuition increase, which resulted in the end of the strikes. And now, Jeremy, with the comments and the solutions that we'd like to present. Yes. Uh, okay, so as Caesar mentioned, it was the Liberal government of Jean Charest at the time who were in power. So whether or not it was done on purpose, he created uh, what we call polarization, where you had kind of an us versus them mentality. So at the election, on the election time, Jean Charest was like the law and order candidate. 
and you had put in my wallet, like you mentioned, who was against the tuition increase, and she said that she wouldn't do it. So he, they, he created it basically by enacting the law, which is Bill 78, and it violates fundamental rights. Um, an agreement between the students and the government took way too long, and this might have ultim ultimately led to the removal of this government because they had been in power since, I believe, 2003. They had been in power for nine years, and ultimately people, you know, a lot of students decided to go vote because most of the time the youth vote is a lot lower than people who are older and, old, and other generations, and they decided to vote, and that ultimately led to the removal of this government, and Padanawa became the premier. So the bad circumstances, which I said, is like the us versus them mentality that you had at the time of the 2012 Quebec student protest, that made the bad legislation happen. So the requirements laid out in Bill 78, they go way too far in restricting the right to peaceful assembly. The government decided to just put egregious limitations on civil liberties. Um, indeed, because engaging in peaceful assembly is a fundamental freedom guaranteed under the Canadian rights uh, charters of rights and freedoms, sorry, and it's also also contrary to the rights and freedoms guaranteed under the Quebec Charter. So even the United Nations Human Rights Commissioner came out and has criticized uh, the province of Quebec in 2012 for what they did with the Jota legislation, saying it was alarming that rights to freedom of association and you know, peaceful assembly were being restricted in a country such as Canada, who has been uh, fighting for decades around the world for rights and freedom. Um, instead, for solutions, both parties concerned should have negotiated in good faith. So, for example, the Liberal government had come back in April of 2012 with a new solution, which is what they call, that was going to increase the tuition over a period of seven years. And the solution before, which was the initial increase, was over a period of five years. It was going to be worse than the previous solution. So the solution, the solution that they proposed was neither fair nor equitable, considering uh, many students, well, not just students, but many people who were supportive of the students at the time, they found it totally insulting, and that only led to more protests uh, across the America. So in those circumstances, it's neither, there, it doesn't matter who is right or wrong. What matters is looking at how to end the crisis without restricting rights and freedoms, and also to end the crisis that, you know, finding a way that everyone will support. So another way that, that could have been good to find a solution, uh, polling students on the issue would have been a far better option in order to know their opinions and how they could remedy the situation. Why? Well, since they had to find some common ground and the actual people concerned by this issue as students, there's no better way of knowing how to remedy the decision by asking them, the students themselves. So finally, the Quebec protests have provided uh, some hope for the future. They taught us the importance of solid democratic organizations and the value of supportive political organizing activities. And also, if you'd like to read more about the decisions rendered uh, by the Police Ethics Committee in regards of the uh, Matricule Set de Vite, or if you'd like to know more about the new laws that were passed uh, with the Bill Signate, we will provide the links to both uh, with, the, with the PowerPoint that will be attached with the presentation. And uh, thank you.